At the moment, I don't think Putin feels he can see that we are we are angry, but I don't think he thinks, oh my goodness, I've really pushed too far now and the West is going in hard against me and my um, regime's survival is at stake. But what's your reading of the situation in in Russia? There was a, there was a sort of a very over-optimistic expectation, I think, from some in the what we call the West, that uh, the sanctions would hit, the taking down of the, the golden arches of McDonald's would lead to a sort of popular uprising of the of the Moscow people against Putin. That's clearly not happened. But life is 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 gradually changing, as we just heard there from Alina. Yes, I think, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I mean, c- clearly the economic squeeze is on and it's going to get worse. Um, I think the idea that pressure on the oligarchs or pressure on the Russian middle classes or pressure on the Russian economy or pressure on Putin's inner circle was going to lead to a palace coup or a back down or a revolution were all optimistic, to put it mildly. Um, Putin's got the reins in his hands and he's um, going, to, going to carry on until he himself chooses to stop. I think the big question really is what uh, which Alina was touching on, is what are Russians really making of this? And I still feel there's a sense of what one might call moral irresponsibility among many Russians. They're upset about what's happening to them and their jobs and their holiday plans and so on. I'm not sure there's a complete awareness of the terrible destruction that's been wrought on Ukraine. And you know, we have hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian children have been kidnapped or being held in orphanages or being put up for adoption inside Russia. We have the abominable treatment of the political prisoners. We have the global famine looming. And I, I, there's a slightly introverted feel to the, to the Russian discussion, which I think jars, particularly with people who are aware of or maybe experiencing the um, atrocities that are going on in Ukraine. I think maybe when uh, some of those um, sanctions were put in place at the beginning of the, the conflict, there was obviously a hope that well, if you really squeezed Pew, you know, it, what was the point of that? Was it just punishment or was it the hope of changing Putin's mind, shifting his, uh, you know, potentially even think, well, if you really squeeze him, then they might pull out. That might be the reason to pull out of Ukraine. Clearly, that's not um, that's not happened. Uh, there's been talk of more sanctions again today. Is there, is there a point in ladling on more and more sanctions? I think that one has to be realistic about sanctions. We've had sanctions against Cuba for pretty much my entire life, or even longer. We've you know, sanctions against North Korea, against Myanmar, against Zimbabwe, against Iran, the list goes on. Um, and they are pretty blunt and imperfect in- instruments. Um, they certainly don't bring the sort of, they're, they're not a substitute for all the other things you need to do at best they complement them um i think that not doing sanctions would have been even worse that would have been saying to the russians we we really don't care i think the real point is that we haven't done the things that we really need to do which is to cut off um the flow of money to russia big time in terms of giving up russian oil and gas completely which would cause severe economic hardship i'm not denying that but would, would make a real impact and i think most important we need to look at the military and security dimension if we had british warships in the black sea right now with americans and turks and others doing the odessa sea lift a bit like the berlin airlift getting the grain out that would really signal to putin um, and to the russian people that we're serious but at the moment i don't think putin feels he can see that we are we are angry but i don't think he thinks oh my goodness i've really pushed too far now and the west is going in hard against me and my um, regime's survival is at stake. That's not the impression that we've 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 pushed across, unfortunately. Uh, and what are the chances of uh, Putin losing? Do you think the econ- you know, we've, we've we've sort of done the huge bulk of economic sanctions? We'll keep labelling those on. They didn't seem to be making any difference. I mean, clearly, the West, Britain, will keep sending the sub- military support it can to Ukraine. Is it down to Ukraine just? I mean, at best, holding back the Russian advance rather than sort of pushing Russia out. Is there a, a, a world in which Putin is defeated and retreats? Does this just grind on for just months and then into years and it just becomes another thing that's in the background? I think what, what Putin's trying to do is to turn um, Ukraine into Aleppo, a sort of um, giant zone of torment and misery in which the um, country is uninvestable, it's in political and economic and social chaos, 
and even if he doesn't conquer all of it, he's destroyed Ukraine as a, as a viable state. And I think that's one war aim. The other war aim is to um, show that the West doesn't have as much willpower as Russia has. I'm afraid at the moment he's he's on track for both of those. We could turn that round. We can show collective willpower, whether it's on the, the grain or, um, or or on other interventions, and we could give Ukraine enough weapons that it starts. Um, turning around the conflict. The difficulty is that it, it's difficult enough to defend um, effectively, and Ukraine is defending, um, it's losing very slowly where it's losing. To counterattack, you actually need military superiority. And it's quite hard to see at the moment the West giving the Ukrainians the sort of weapons that they need for that. Of course, it's possible that Russia's military is in really serious trouble. We see all sorts of um, stories about them running out of things and um, little mutinies and um, signs of military breakdown. And it's tempting to stitch those dots together and say that it's Putin's war machine that's going to crumble first. Um, but I'd be cautious about that because the fear factor in Russia is very great. And however badly led you are, however badly equipped, and however miserable your life is if you think you'll be shot for refusing to obey orders, you probably then continue to obey them to some extent or another.